In this video, we're going to look at the Helmholtz energy and also the conditions for spontaneity in a process which occurs at constant temperature and constant volume. So from the first law of thermodynamics, we have that energy must be conserved. So any energy change in the system, du, has to equal the differential of heat plus the differential of work, dq plus dw. And we know from the second law of thermodynamics that for any spontaneous uh, process that the entropy must be greater than or equal to zero. It's zero if and only if it's reversible, and if it's irreversible the entropy change must be greater than zero. So we defined entropy as being greater than or equal to, in the Clausius inequality, the differential of heat dq divided by T temperature. So rearranging that we have that uh, dq is less than or equal to T dS. And we also remember from previous sections that the differential of work is equal to the negative of the external pressure times the change in volume minus PDV. So if we combine these two facts together, dq is less than or equal to TDS, dW is minus PDV, we get that du, our total change in internal energy, must be less than or equal to TDS minus PDV. And uh, as I mentioned last time in, in some previous videos, these types of differential statements are going to start showing up more and more, so pay attention to the form of these as they arise. Okay, so let's say we have a constant V process. We said we're going to have processes with constant volume and constant temperature. So dt, dv, they're both going to be zero. So that means dv is going to be zero if it's constant volume. So this term is going to go away. And that's at constant V, as we've set up here. So that means that our expression is going to become du is less than or equal to TDS. And if we move TDS to the other side, we have du minus TDS is less than or equal to zero. Now we want to come up with a specific state function for this constant volume constant temperature process which is going to be equivalent to du minus TDS for uh, this type of situation here. So what we're going to do is let's go ahead and look at if we include another part of this differential here. Let's say TDS and then inside this parentheses we're going to add SDT less than or equal to zero. So this is still the same expression because dt is going to be zero. So this whole term here is going to be zero. But if you see where I'm going with this, we're going to have du minus d, or we can just take the differential of a total function du minus ts is less than or equal to zero because if we take the differential of D of u, we get du. If we take the differential of t times s, we get tds plus sdt. So we have this function here defined by u minus ts, which has to be less than or equal to zero in a constant volume and constant temperature process. So we are going to just define a function called the Helmholtz energy, which is going to be symbolized by the letter a and our conditions for spontaneity in a process which occurs at constant volume and temperature is going to be that the differential of the Helmholtz energy is less than or equal to zero. And this Helmholtz energy A is going to be defined as, not T, it's going to be defined as internal energy minus temperature times entropy. So these are the conditions for spontaneity for a spontaneous process at constant temperature and volume. So as we said, we're going to have this state function here. A is called, as we have on the title of the video, Helmholtz energy. You might also hear it called the Helmholtz free energy, either way. The Helmholtz energy and that is going to be a state function. 
and during any spontaneous process at constant volume and constant pressure and constant volume and constant temperature, it must stay the same or decrease in order to satisfy both the first and second laws of thermodynamics. So must stay the same or decrease at constant volume and temperature. Okay, so then in terms of kind of macroscopic changes, we're, we're talking in terms of microscopic infinitesimal changes here when we're talking about in differentials. If we talk about macroscopic changes, we have that the delta A during a process is going to be equal to delta U, change in internal energy, minus T delta S. And the mathematical statement of this is that any process, this must be less than or equal to zero if it's at constant volume and temperature. All right, so one final note here is that if we have the delta S during a process, we know that delta S is going to equal the reversible heat over temperature. So we know that delta U, or sorry, delta A, then is going to equal delta U. And if delta S is the heat divided by temperature, then T delta S is just the heat. So A is the internal energy minus heat if it's done reversibly. And we know that for internal energy from the first law up here, that delta U is just going to equal the heat plus work during a reversible process. So this means if we have a reversible process, which is occurring at constant volume and temperature here, that the Helmholtz energy is equal to the maximum work which can be uh, can be done by the system after that process occurs or must be done on the system for the process to occur uh, depending on the sign of this. So we could say that this is the maximum work which can be carried out by the system reversibly. So if our temperature isn't changing, um, the, in order to satisfy the second law, our change in our Helmholtz energy here, A, is going to be equal to whatever the maximum amount of work we can extract from the system. So if it's negative, we can get that much work out of the system. The system can do that much work on the surroundings. And if your Helmholtz energy for some process like that is positive, then you have to input this much work onto, into the system in order for that process to be able to occur.